Hi, and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we're going to be working, as you can tell, we're not inside the shop, we're outside. Uh, we're at a family member's house, going to do brakes on the back of this uh, 2013 Hyundai Elantra. Uh, so I'm going to bring you in there, I'm going to show you what it looks like, and then I'm going to show you what I think we're going to need to do to, uh, to get this job finished and get it wrapped up. All right, so let me bring you in there, show you what it looks like, what we're going to do, what tools we're going to need, and then we're going to get the job done. All right, so let me bring you in and show you. And here's the jack that we're going to use to jack the vehicle up. We are going to use these three-ton jack stands to secure the vehicle so we don't have any issue. And we are going to use a three-ton jack, as you can see, is made by OTC. I will put a link down below in my Amazon store if you want to check it out. OTC makes some really fine products. You'll see these jacks and the jack stands that I'm using here, as well as the, uh, the OTC Spectrum lights at the same time. All right, so uh, let's get started. So this is the uh, the brakes themselves. As you can tell, it's a little bit rusty, so these rotors, as you can guess, they are going to be replaced. We're going to take out that screw right there. This one looks like it's already broken off in here, so we're not going to worry about that one. We may be changing these calipers, but we're going to see how it goes. And uh, let me show you the other side now. This is the other side. As you can see, this is fairly rusty too. And listen, you can hear the sound. That's the brake pad grinding, most likely on the inner over here it's, it's grinding. So we're going to check these calipers and the caliper slide pins to make sure that they're working the way they're supposed to. All right, so uh, this one here, it doesn't, we don't have to worry about taking these screws out because it looks like they're already broken off in here already. So, uh, all right, let's grab some tools. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to push this caliper back so we can see if the uh, caliper itself slides properly and if these slide pins here are functioning correctly as well. All right, so uh, all right, let's get started. Okay, so this is an example of what you're going to need. In this particular case, we are changing the rotors because they are, they are destroyed, as you can see here. We are going to change the calipers because we took the other side apart, and the other side, the caliper was no good, so we're changing both left and right side. Uh, I always recommend changing calipers in sets, but that's personal preference. If you get your calipers, make sure you use the hardware that comes with it, the new connector for the hose here it comes with a different thread on it, so you want to be careful with that. And of course, read your directions right here too, because it is soft aluminum, and if you over tighten it, you'll destroy the uh, the caliper itself. All right, the brake pads here we're going to use. These are just the ones I happen to be using. The replacement pads come with spreader clips, which the other ones did not have. But we are going to utilize these clips because I do like when they keep the brake pad away from touching into the rotor. We're going to need an assortment of wrenches. We're going to need a very long ratchet. And in this particular case, we're using a 14 millimeter socket. And we are also going to use a 12 millimeter socket. We're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, we are going to use a driver such as this, possibly a pry bar, a couple of different scrapers, some grease to lubricate everything. We put it back together. Of course, some brake cleaner. We have some penetrating um, rust buster here as well. And of course, my favorite OTC light, uh, possibly a set of um, vice grips like this, just to pinch off that brake line right there while we switch over the caliper. And of course, a hammer and some emery cloth to clean off the rust. Now, remember what I told you about the other side? The brake pad actually slid down between the caliper and the rotor itself, and it actually locked up the wheel. That's why we're not able to get this vehicle down to the shop. So that's why we have to change these calipers as well, because the other side overheated and it destroyed it. All right, first thing we're going to do is we sprayed this up with some penetrating oil, as you can see. We're going to take that screw out right there. You want to be real careful. You don't want to break it. So we're going to turn it out a little bit, spray it, turn it back in. Then we're going to turn it out again, spray it, turn it back in. And we're going to continue until we get that out, hopefully without breaking it. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here, and we're going to take out this bolt here. It's a 14 millimeter. We're going to take out that bolt down there, which is also a 14 millimeter. We're going to pinch off the brake line slightly to keep the fluid from coming out. And then we're going to remove this bolt right here that holds the brake line to the caliper. And, of course, we're going to have a bucket like this to catch any fluid that comes out of there. Now the caliper hold down bolts right here, they are also 14 millimeters and they hold the caliper mounting bracket. 
to the vehicle itself. All right, so uh, all right, let's uh, let's get set up and uh, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here with a uh, metal drift like this, and we're going to go on top of this screw right here, and we're going to hit it pretty firmly to try to break the rust loose. So let's do that. Okay. Now, if you can get it out with a regular screwdriver, then by all means, you can do it. It's starting to turn, but it's pretty tight, so we're not going to play around with it. We're going to use an impact driver such as this. Check my Amazon store. You'll see this is in there. This tool comes in extremely handy. All right, we're going to put it on here like this. We're going to put this over the top of it. Now, we're going to tap it a couple times. It turned a little. Well, we're going to put a little bit of penetrating oil on it. And then we're going to turn it back in. Just so we can make sure it comes out without breaking. Okay, so now we got that out. Okay, now we'll put this on the side. A lot of guys like to throw these away. If I can reuse them, I always try to reuse them. So put it on the side for now. And uh, for now, we're just going to leave this sit and we're going to remove that caliper. And the next thing we're going to do is let's get our bucket underneath here because we are going to drip a little bit of brake fluid when we take this out. Okay, we're going to take a pair of pliers such as this. And we're just going to pinch the brake line right here very very lightly we're not going to damage it we're just going to hold it just to keep the fluid from dripping through it just like that okay that's all we're going to do next thing we're going to do now is we're going to come in here and we're going to take off that nut for the uh the brake line itself now just so you know that's 12 millimeter but yours may be different okay so you have your bucket there because it may drip a little bit to take that washer make sure the washer is on here and not stuck on here because this we're going to throw away and we're going to be replacing it. where are you this we're going to be throwing away and we're going to be using a new one all right the other washer is now stuck on here which is okay because we don't need it we'll put that right like that next thing we're going to do now we're going to come up underneath here and we're going to loosen up those screws that hold the caliper to the mounting bracket itself. They usually not really fit that tight. You can just turn them out. Now, if you can't get on it with a, a ratchet such as this, then you can get in here with a 14 millimeter wrench like that and just break it right loose and take it out. Now, if you try to take these screws out here and they don't come out, or they just spin and don't come out, and at that point, you want to grab a 17 millimeter wrench and you want to hold the slide pin right here so that it doesn't rotate when you try to remove that bolt right there. Okay? Just like this. And now our, our caliper is ready to be removed from the vehicle. Now we are going to be replacing it. We're not going to keep it. So we're just going to pry that off. Okay, so now we're just going to pry this off. You can use a pry bar, a screwdriver, whatever you have to get it off. It really doesn't matter. And we're going to come back to this in just a second. Okay, we'll put that down half and now into the bucket, just like that. And we'll leave it there for one minute. Now we're going to take this mounting bracket off right here. And again, that was 14 millimeter in the back there as well. I'll bring it in there. I'll show you what they look like. Right, 14 millimeter. Okay. And we're going to take the two of them out. They may be a little rusty, 
and you want to break them both loose first before you take either one of them out. Okay? These are a little bit rusty. I can feel they're very tight. So we're going to spray it with some penetrating oil. Take these brake pads out of the way. Okay. Now we can spray it a little better. Okay. And now we'll take the bolts out the rest of the way. And then off comes the mounting bracket itself. Now we're going to put this down here for now. Remember, we're going to use these bolts over again, so hold on to them. We're going to take this rotor off the car. And as you can see, it's pretty rusty. All right. Okay. Next, we're going to come in over here, and we're going to use a scraper to clean this off here. If you don't have a scraper, you can use a chisel. You can use a file, you can use emery cloth, or you can use a disc to clean it up. Whatever works for you. All right, so we're going to do that. But before we do that, let's replace our caliper with the new one. Okay, so now we're going to be doing this in this bucket, just so we don't make a mess. Next thing we're going to do now is going to take our caliper here. And you see this clip right here? We need to get that clip off. So you can get in here with a screwdriver such as this and pry it up just like that a little bit at a time and you'll see this starts to move up and now you want to get this in here right underneath there and just pry it and it comes right out hold your hand over it because this clip will go flying pull the clip out and we're going to put this on the side we're going to reuse it next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this we're going to pull it just a little bit here just like that and we're going to unhook it right from down there the way you do that is just go on here with a socket just like this and I'm going to try to see if you can see this rotator like that grab a pair of pliers and just pull that off let it go just like that take our ratchet back off take this out just like that. I know that looked easy for me. I know you're going to have a problem with it, but just take your time and you should be fine. Okay, we'll put this down on the side like this for now. We're going to take our new caliper and we're going to match it up just to make sure it's exactly the same. Our bleeder is here, our inlet is here, and the cable connects on here for the parking brake, so this looks okay. We're going to disconnect this mounting bracket now, and we're going to take the mounting bracket off of the caliper just temporarily okay so that's what we're going to do now you remember how I showed you how to do it you just take the caliper put your wrench on here like this take this one put it on here like this and then you just squeeze it and it breaks loose just like that. Now obviously with two hands it'll be a lot easier, but I'm trying to do it one-handed. We'll do it just like this, like this, and squeeze it. Okay, now we'll take the mounting bracket off. Take those screws out that we just loosened up. We are gonna use the new screws, just so you know, we're not using the old stuff. We'll take this and put this down. Let's take this one out too. Okay. Take our mounting bracket off. Let's put that down somewhere here. 
and now we're going to put this back through here. Put it through here like this. Right? We're going to take a clip that we previously took off. And then once you have it caught like that, you can grab a hammer and just tap that clip all the way down like that. Next thing we're going to do now, we're going to come in here with our ratchet like this. We're going to turn this down like that. And then we're going to hook that piece on there just like that. And then let it go. And that's it. Our parking brake is now attached. We're going to take out this little piece here. We're going to put it in the old caliper that we took off, just so we don't have a mess. We're going to get this one out of the way for now. So now we have our caliper is all mounted up. Our parking brake is on. We're going to put this off to the side right here for now. And we're going to come in here and we're going to clean this up. We are going to put this off to the side so it doesn't get all dirty. Okay. We're just going to hang it up out of the way. Let me get a hanger and we'll hang that up. These hangers come in really very handy. Take a look at my Amazon store and you'll see them in there. They're very, very cheap. We're just going to take it like this, like this. And we're going to hang this up out of the way. Just like that. Just like, where are you? Just like that, okay? Now the next thing we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna come in here with a scraper, clean this off here. If you have a wire wheel, you'll hit it with a wire wheel. If not, anything that you use to scrape it, as long as you get all that rust off, you'll be in good shape. All right, so now let me clean this up. Once it's clean, we'll come back and we'll start putting this thing back together. Or the, the hub bearing itself all cleaned up. We have all of the rust off of here. We're going to put some kind of anti-rust stuff on here right now to keep it from rusting in the future. All right, so let's, uh, let's do that first. You can usually brush it on with a brush. You can do it by hand. Whatever works for you. This will keep it from rusting. It won't stop it completely, but it'll... It'll slow it down in the future. Some of them come with a brush. Some come with a spray. This one comes with a brush. But I left it at work. So we're just going to do it by hand. Just like that. And now this will keep it from rusting in the future. Okay? And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our rotor. And you can see our rotor is brand new, but it does come covered with, a, with an oily substance here. So we're going to need to clean that off. But before we do that, we want to match it up against the rotor that came out to make sure it's the exact same size, which it is. And we are going to stand them side by side. Put them side by side down here. Hopefully you can see this. Just like this. To make sure that they're the same height right here. And you can see they are the same height. All right, so that's going in there. This we're going to put right here. Let's get some cleaner. Let's clean this up a little bit. Now there's all different kinds of, of brake cleaners. This just happens to be the one that I'm using. And we're just going to clean it up just a little bit. We're going to come back and clean this up a little later on, but for now we're just going to get the major, the major oil off of it. And before we finish the whole job up, we'll do it again. Okay? This will eliminate the amount of smoking that's going to take place. All right, now we're going to turn this until we come up to that area right there where the screw was, and we're going to put that screw back in there. So we're going to line it up just like this, put it on here like this, push it in, and now we're going to put that screw back inside there. Here's the screw. I'm going to lubricate the threads just a little bit. Just a little bit on that screw as well. And now we're going to screw it in here. And remember the one 
was already broken off, so nothing we can do about that. The reason I like to use these is because when you put it on, the rotor doesn't move, and you can work without this falling off or moving around while you're working. All right, we're just going to tack this on just a little bit, just to make sure it's tight. You don't have to, but I do. Okay. So now our rotor is on. We're going to spin it, make sure we have no contact with anything that's rusty and it's quiet. So we're going to move to the next step now. All right, next thing we're going to do, this is our mounting bracket. We're going to put this lubricant. It's a brake lubricant. We're going to put it here underneath where the mounting hardware is going to go. We're just putting a slight bead on there right now. And we're going to move it around with our hands, just so you know. Take your finger and just move it around just to give it a little bit of a coat. Just like that. Okay? Same thing on this one here. Just like that. Okay? We'll clean our hands off. And we are going to take the uh, new hardware kit and we're going to take that new bolt that came with the caliper. All right, so let's open this kit up. Don't lose it because you're all going to need everything that's in this kit. And now, we're just going to put this and this, these two. One of them we're going to put on the bolt already like this. And we're going to put that down on the ground. We're going to put this with it because we're all going to use this as well. These are the mounting hardware kit that's going onto the mounting bracket. You just put it on right here like this, push it, just like that, and make sure that that little bit right down inside there is pushed in all the way nice and tight. Turn it over. This is the piece here I'm telling you about. That's got to be nice and tight inside that caliper. Okay? Caliper bracket, I should say. Okay? Put it down here like this, push it over the top, like that, like that, and push that in and the reason that that's got to be tight in there is because if you don't push it in tight, this will fit on, but this will touch the rotor and it will make a squealing noise. Okay, so we're going to take this. We're going to take our two bolts. That, remember, we took the two bolts out right here. We're going to put some, some lubricant on these threads right here, even though there is a little on here now. We're going to add some more to it. Okay, just like that. Same thing here. You don't need a lot, just a little bit. Okay. Take our mounting bracket, lift it up in here like this. Hold it in place. Now don't don't worry about that that uh, that uh, lubricant on the rotor. We're going to clean that off before we put this all together. All right. We're going to catch that one bolt right there, just by a couple threads. Once we have it caught by hand. We're just going to snug it in just a couple of turns with our ratchet. Okay. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to take our second bolt and put our second bolt in from the back as well. You're going to have to slide the bracket around a little bit to get it to line up. And once you have it caught, both of the bolts are caught in here. Now you can tighten them up with the ratchet and tighten it down. All right, and this one is still turning in fairly easy, so I'm going to do it by hand. We are going to torque these two bolts in here, for, but for now, we're going to continue. We'll come back to that in just a minute. Spin it again. Make sure you have no contact whatsoever. Nothing. Okay. Now I want to point something out to you. If you don't have that bolt right there, you can take a lug nut. In this case, I'm using the, the lock because it goes on further. You could put this on there and turn it in, and that, that will hold the rotor in place as well while you're working. That's if you don't have this screw. Okay, and the reason you're doing that is because these bolts are nuts and not long enough to hold that rotor on. All right, so that's nice and tight. The rotor will not be going anywhere. Next thing we're going to do now, we're going to take our brake pads. And what you want to do with a brake pad is you always want to make sure the sensor here is in this location 
that's where you want to put the bracket. I put the sensor on for this location. So make sure it's like this, that the sensors line up exactly, because this could be a mirror image and this sensor could be up there if it's the pad for the other side. All right, so now we have these. That's the correct ones. We're going to put that down here. We're going to take a little bit of brake lubricant. We're going to put it on here, just like this. We're going to push it on with our finger, just like that, and like that, and here. I know there's a lot of controversy about using the, uh, the grease on these. I always did, and I always will. Some people don't like it, but that's personal preference. All right, now we take our brake pad, put our brake pad in here, and just push it, and it goes right in there just like it's supposed to. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to take some more lubricant, put it on here. You will see this lubricant in my store. If you look down underneath the video in my Amazon store, you'll see this is in there as well. Just like that. So that covers everywhere that the metal is going to touch is going to be coated. All right, put it on here, push it in, just like that. Okay, let's clean off our hands. And like I said, we're going to come back later on and we're going to clean off all that excess that's on here. Just so you know, including the rotor that you see right here. We're going to clean that off as well. Okay. Now, every place that is going to touch on the caliper, I'll show you what I mean. And when you look at this caliper, when this caliper goes on here, it's going to touch on here and here and here and back in there. We're going to put a slight bit of silicone on there as well. You don't need a lot. You just need a little bit. So that's what we're going to do. Just a little bit on here, a little bit on there. And just a little bit on the piston as well. And that's it. Let's clean our hands off again. Okay. Now, remember the other ones that came off, they didn't have these spreader clips. But this particular case, it does have the spreaders. So we are going to put them on there like this. And there's a tiny little hole in the brake pad right here that these clips connect into. So that's what we're going to do. Hold the brake pads in because they will, they will push out. Okay. Same thing on the bottom here. I'll get these in and then you can see what I'm doing. Okay, just like that. And we'll take our caliper, put our caliper over the top, push it in like this. And if it doesn't fit, you just push these pins in a little bit, the slide pins. And then we're going to catch our bolts one at a time up on the top like this. And before we tighten anything up, we're going to do the exact same thing on the bottom down here. Okay. Now that we have it caught, we can screw, screw the, the uh, caliper bolts in. We're just going to snug them down for now. We're not going to tighten them yet. Stop. And then we'll do the exact same thing on this one here. Snug it down. Now remember, if you're trying to tighten that screw in the back, that 12 millimeter that rotates, stick your 17 millimeter wrench on here, put this on here, and snug it down. Same thing on the bottom. Okay, so now our caliper mounting bolts here are tight. Our caliper bracket bolts are both tight. We are going to talk these down in just a minute. But now our caliper's on, brake pads are in, spreader clips are in. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect up our brake line on here. The way you do that is you slide on that one washer onto the nut, put this through here, just like that. Take the other washer, put the other washer right on there like that. And this little tab right here has got to fit into a little hole on the side right there. And you hold the line with one hand and you can screw it in with the other. Make sure you line up 
that little tab right there with the hole. Make sure that that little tab right there is connected into that small hole where it's supposed to be. And now we can snug this down here too. Now remember what this paper said here, soft aluminum, do not cross thread or over tighten. Damaged threads voids the warranty. So do not over tighten it. All right, we're gonna snug it down. Just till it touches and then just a little, just a little bit more. And now we can remove our vice grips that were on there. That's it. Okay, so everything is now done. We're going to go over it in our head to make sure we did everything the way we're supposed to. We're going to grab a rag and we're going to clean off this grease. So let me clean this grease off first and then we'll, uh, we'll continue. Okay. Okay. So now we cleaned off all of the grease on here. We're going to go over everything to make sure we tightened it up and that everything is perfect. All right, so let's do that. We put our screw back in here. We lubricated it and tightened it, so that's nice and tight. We put our mounting bracket back on. We mounted our two 14 millimeter screws in the back here and down the bottom here as well. We tightened those up. I will bring you in there in a second, just so you know. We also put in our, our uh, 14 millimeter here, and I'm sorry, 12 millimeter. 12 millimeter here and 12 millimeter here, and we tighten those up. Our brake line is then tight as well, and that's it. All right, let me bring you in, I'll show you what I mean about those, uh, those bolts in the back. Okay, so this is the 14 millimeter here, and then the other 14 millimeter is down on the bottom. Right there, that we tightened up as well. This 12 millimeter here is tight. We held this right here with our 17 millimeter. Held it here with our 17 millimeter, tightened up the 12 millimeter. We put the washer on here as it's supposed to be. One washer against the new caliper. One washer on the other side of the line itself. And then we tighten this up. And that little pin is exactly where it belongs. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna bleed the brakes. All right, so uh, let's do that. Okay, we're gonna bleed the brakes now. We have our assistant sitting in the vehicle. We made sure that the brake fluid in the reservoir is full. And now we're gonna open up this valve. But we're gonna have our assistant pump the brake pedal three or four times, step on the brake, and hold it down while I open this up. And we're gonna let the fluid out. And when it's to the floor, we're gonna close the valve. And we're gonna let our assistant take the foot off the pedal and then pump it up again. All right, so let's do that. Okay, pump it up. Okay, and now we open it up. We make sure we have a bucket down below to catch the fluid. And we open it up very slowly and let the fluid come out. Okay, we're going to do it again. Pump it up again. Okay, hold it down. Open the valve. Step down, let me know when it's on the floor. Okay, then we close the valve. Have our assistant pump the pedal again three or four times. Okay, now we have the assistant step all the way to the floor and hold the brake pedal to the floor while we open the valve up. Very easy because it's going to come out pretty fast. We're going to get air mixed with fluid, and now you can see it's air still in there, so we're going to let it all drain out. We're going to close the valve and pump it up one more time, three times. Okay, and then step to the floor, and while the assistant steps to the floor, we open up the brake bleeder valve again, let the fluid come out. We're still getting air. So we're going to let all the fluid come out. 
we're going to close the valve and pump it three more times. Okay, and then step to the floor, open the valve. Okay, pump it again. And we'll continue until all the fluid comes out nice and clean. Okay, step to the floor. Okay, one more time. Pump it three more times, I should say. Okay, step to the floor. Pump it again. Okay, step to the floor. Okay, you can let go now. Okay, now that we have the fluid coming out with no air, it's all bled, and that's it, this job is done. So we bled the brakes and we have all of the, uh, the air out of it. We're going to clean it off with some brake cleaner just to make sure everything is nice and clean, that the fluid is off because as you know, brake fluid takes paint off. So we're going to clean everything down really well. Make sure our bucket is down there to catch the fluid. Clean it all off. And the last thing we're going to do is the caliper come with new caps to go over the top of the bleeder valve. Let's just put that on. Like that. Dry everything off here. Okay, so that's it. Our brake job is now finished. We cleaned everything up really well. We're now going to put the wheels on, obviously. We did torque everything to the proper specs in the back here, so now the brakes are 100% finished. We filled up our reservoir up front on the master cylinder just to make sure that the fluid level is up to where it belongs. We're going to put the wheels on, take the uh, jack jacket up, take our jack stands out from underneath the vehicle itself, and then we're going to road test it. I will tell you this, when you're driving it, you are going to get a little bit of smoke in there. Even though you cleaned it off with brake cleaner, you still have a little bit of grease in there and you will get a little bit of smoke on there, which is absolutely normal. But that's it. This job is done and we're on to the next. All right, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.